Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamas Tumavit Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses 61 to 65 of chapter 2. Tani Sarvani Sayam Ya Tani Sarvani Sayam Ya Yukta Asita Matparaha Yukta Asita Matparaha Vashehi Yasyendriyani Vashehi Yasyendriyani Tasya Pragna Pratishthita Tasya Pragna Pratishthita Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsaha Dhyayato Vishayan Pumsaha Sangaste Shupa Jayate Sangaste Shupa Jayate Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha Kamat Krodho Bhijayate Kamat Krodho Bhijayate Krodhat Bhavati Sammoha Krodhat Bhavati Sammoha Sammohat Smriti Vibhramaha Sammohat Smriti Vibhramaha Smriti Bhramshat Buddhi Nashaha Smriti Bhramshat Buddhi Nashaha Buddhinashat pranashyati Buddhinashat pranashyati Ragadvesha vimuktaistu Ragadvesha vimuktaistu Vishayan indriyaischaran Vishayan indriyaischaran Atma vashyair vidheyatma Atma Vashyai Vidheyatma Prasada Madhi Gachati Prasada Madhi Gachati Prasade Sarva Dukkha Naam Prasade Sarva Dukkha Naam 
ಹಾಸ್ಯೋಪಜಾಯತೆ ಹಾಸ್ಯೋಪಜಾಯತೆ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಚೇತಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಶು ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಚೇತಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಶು ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪರ್ಯವತಿಷ್ಠತೆ ಪರ್ಯವತಿಷ್ಠತೆ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಡೇ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಸೊ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ವಿ ವರ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಟು ಹೌ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ it gets into there have been a, a lot of questions actually i have been flooded with a lot of questions regarding the modifications of karma huh? so today i will give you more depth so that all your questions will be answered some of you have asked the form of mail some of you have put the questions in the youtube comments some of you are still thinking i can feel that so i'll give you more inputs today actually i was quite happy when uh, so many questions came because that shows that the thinking process has been triggered within you see generally you have many many questions regarding the world among 100 people it is only 10 people who will generally question others just lead a mechanical life and among those people who ask questions you will find very less people probably one in a thousand who ask questions about themselves about their own minds so you are constantly focusing on the world your entire life actually goes away in focusing on the world but what about you as an individual who is contacting the world so all the questions have been related to the mind how does karma become this how does uh, what is the difference between karma and icha so many questions pertaining to the to your own mind and many others have also uh, given your experiences in the youtube comment section i was reading that it was very nice because almost everyone i could see you all absorbed you you or rather you you started absorbing the energy you know and it has set a, a deep thinking process a deep uh, process of self exploration the only thing which i would like to mention here is remember one thing don't become result oriented see we we have just started on this journey so the moment you learn a few things immediately don't expect solutions for that you know when you sow a seed then you have to water it and then wait also patiently the seed will become a, a tree one day and yield fruits so you cannot expect overnight results in spirituality So what did we see last week 
a human being thinking on sense objects develops attachment for them first line and then from sangaha attachment is born desire kamaha and from kamaha is born krodha anger So one question has been asked by Keshav. He has put it in the YouTube comment section. It's an interesting question which he has asked. What he has asked is, Hari Om sir, thanks for a deep analysis of the wisdom. In sales, a go-getter attitude is expected. This might conflict with the principle of karma given the intensity of thoughts expected to get things done. how does one ensure the initial trickle of thought rivers are cut off without compromising on the job deliverables so this is a very interesting question which uh, keshav has asked very useful question also this will be useful to everyone why i am taking that up straight away is because uh that will help you the an- uh, when as i start answering that that will help you in understanding the deeper secrets of this verse better so what you're asking us supposing we have a sales job a lot of intensity of desire is expected so how do we apply it there it is not only with respect to sales job i would say with respect to all the aspects of your life wherever you are participating you require your thoughts to be there a uh, a sports person who wants to achieve something he needs to have a lot of passion a lot of desire there if there is absolutely no desire then that person cannot uh, act in a motivated way actually desire motivates you to act so why have you asked this question and when i am when i am talking to keshav i am talking to everyone who is listening to this because this is only i am taking it as a as an example this is a classic example of uh, you know that uh, point which i always say that whenever you are listening to these truths uh, you listen through the filters of your mind you are a prisoner of your own thoughts and mind the mind rules you completely that even when you listen to this wisdom as the wisdom tries to go inside you what happens is your uh, uh belief systems whatever ideas you have stored in your mind actually they all come as a block and then when the wisdom passes through these blocks of the mind what you understand is something else what is being communicated is something else i want the questioner to pay a lot of attention to this and i want others also to pay a lot of attention to this because i am explaining the psychology of the mind through this question so right from the outset i have been explaining the difference between ichha and kama ichha is a shakti the capacity to willfully desire and kamaha is when the same desire is out of control it is going on its own the thoughts are running on their own then that is called kamaha so last week i gave you this example of driving a car now we will take that example and then uh see how this question fits in so the speed of the car can be equated to your emotions and the steering control the steering wheel of the car 
can be equated to your awareness. Now, why is it that you buy a car? In order to drive. And is there any uh, limit to the speed? Yes, the, um, uh, as far as when you are travelling on the road, they have put a safety limit. Up to that extent you can drive. Now, what is important when you are driving the car is the steering control. When you have perfect steering control, you may be uh, driving at a very high speed. Still, you will not have an accident. Whereas, when you don't have steering control, you may be driving at a very low speed, but you may go and dash somewhere. So, when we talk of the speed of the car, that is the intensity of the thought flow which you generate towards an object. Nowhere in the scriptures are they saying, don't generate thoughts. That is why I was explaining to you the concept of Ichha Shakti. All they are saying is, ensure that the thoughts are not out of your control. So again, there has been a mix-up. This, uh, this will keep on happening because uh, right from young age, you know, you have read so many concepts, you have heard so many things and you have been uh, born and brought up in a particular environment. And you also have, uh, you know, many, many, you take in a lot of inputs from friends, from books, from so many sources. And all those actually act as filters when you are trying to understand this. So, the first principle is, can I have thoughts? Yes. First of all, you don't have a choice. That choice itself uh, comes only to a person who is advanced spiritually, who has uh, developed the Ichha Shakti. But as a concept, is it non-spiritual to have thoughts? Definitely no. Is it non-spiritual to have a desire? No. You can be very, very advanced spiritually and still have desires, still have thoughts. I am put... See, whatever I explained in the initial portion of last week, I am putting it in a little more technical way this week. I said, no, attachment doesn't mean you should not contact the world. Attachment doesn't mean you should not experience the world. Attachment doesn't mean you should not enjoy the world. You can do all these things. That example of a chair and the gum actually uh, is something which you need to reflect upon. So, the moment it is said, don't have kamaha, don't have sangaha, attachment, all these statements. Immediately, how you equate it as, now we should not contact, we should completely cut off all the thoughts. The thoughtless state gives you the uh, experience of enlightenment. But when you are operating in the world, you require thoughts, you, when, when we say thoughts, we are talking of right from Dhyayato to Sangaha to Kama. All these things are required, but they will no longer be attachment or Kamaha when you are doing it willfully. That is called Ichha Shakti. So, we are not talking about the intensity alone here. See, the difference between Dhyayato, Sangaha and Kamaha is no doubt the intensity. But the bottom line of all these is lack of awareness, lack of control. Whenever you have uncontrolled thoughts, then all these things are going to happen. When your thoughts are controlled, then you develop, you fix a goal in life. You develop what is called as Ichha Shakti. 
and you have the power to ensure that the the uh, thoughts don't develop into these uh, undesirable modifications we are going to see more modifications today actually originally i had planned to move on to the next verse today but seeing your interest all of you have uh, really really started thinking deeply doing a lot of sadhana i thought i'll reveal some more today all these inputs will help you to understand your own mind and the more you understand the workings of your mind the more control you will get that is the beauty so when you are going for a sales job do you require a lot of in, uh, do you require an intense desire yes it should be an ichha a willful intense desire a goal this is what i want to sell and then what should i do actually if you think about it if you are suffering from kamaha why i am using the word suffering is because this is a disease of the mind kamaha is a disease ichha shakti is a positive thing when you have kamaha you will not be able to sell your products properly because kamaha comes from sangaha attachment uncontrolled desires come from attachment now when you are attached to the results how will you be able to sell your products properly you will try to push your products you will not have the calmness of mind to study the psychology of the person to whom you are talking and unless and until you understand the psychology of the other person how are you going to present your product in a way which is appealing to the other person so if you think about it kamaha is an obstacle to any sales person and it's not only the sales person i'm saying a sales person because you've asked this question but in any interaction of life wherever you have kamaha it will quickly develop into these modifications like anger we saw a few no the superiority inferiority so many things we saw so it's going to quickly develop into those modifications and these modifications will cause tremendous stress in your personality and a stressed person cannot act efficiently so where do you need to cut off the thoughts when the thoughts are negative that is where you need to cut off the thoughts when the thoughts are positive you can consciously allow the thoughts to run because that's going to benefit you it's going to benefit others also see a thoughtless stage that is a stage of enlightenment means by himself a sthita pragna a person who has reached that state will not have any thoughts but when uh, when he is uh, put in a situation when he has to contact the world then he will choose what thoughts are to be generated in order to fulfill the task in hand supposing let's say you put uh, a sthita pragna in a totally new field which he he has never he, uh, he has no knowledge about let us say you give him the latest computer just for argument sake we'll take a sthita pragna who doesn't know anything about the computer and you give him that computer now and he is going to operate it what will he do he'll immediately generate the thoughts of learning consciously and he will if you are an expert he'll ask you or he'll consult an expert and learn everything about the computer very fast and then what uh, once the work is over what will he do again he will withdraw all the thoughts and get into the state of silence so even when he is generating the thoughts he is ensuring that those thoughts don't become attachment and kamaha they are only remaining at the ichha level ichha means the 
willful desire when you generate a thought flow towards an object and you are fully aware and any time you want you have the capacity to withdraw those thoughts that is called ichha so this is a very important question which keshav has asked for all the sadhaks because there is always this chance of misunderstanding the moment we say don't get attached you stop contacting the moment we say don't have kamaha now you say oh i should not desire anything at all if you don't desire anything then you cannot function in life desirelessness means a person is in that state where the desire does not get created on its own whenever he wants he can create a desire and whenever he wants he can again pull back the desire that is called ichha shakti that is why see very very carefully our great yogis they called ichha as a shakti as a power which as human beings you have within you but unfortunately instead of using your uh, powers to uh, develop the ichha shakti you have gone deep into uh, the ladder of fall your thoughts have gone completely out of control so in that state when somebody comes and tells you why are you having kamaha why are you having this thought flow immediately your question is without thought flow how can i contact the world without a uh, a passion how can i function in the world where did they say don't have passion actually if you go to the upanishads he says you should have passion even in the uh, bhagavad gita in several places krishna says you know arjuna you should act you should win this war and you should enjoy the wealth why does he say that you should think so if you carefully understand this number 1 is the intensity of the thoughts number 2 is your awareness and control now intensity of thoughts how much of intensity should be there that depends upon the situation in certain situations you don't require an intense stream of thoughts just a a, a casual thought just one thought is enough to fulfill the task what a spiritual person does what a yogi does is he just generates one thought finishes that and then again withdraws when i say withdraws withdraws the mind in certain other situations a stream of thoughts may be required he consciously generates that and then when the task is over again he withdraws in certain situations tremendous passion is required without passion the task cannot be completed so in those situations consciously a yogi generates a lot of thoughts and so so that uh, the thick flow of thoughts become a passion ichha and then he fulfills the task and after that again withdraws the mind so please understand this properly i'm so happy that you've asked this question but you need to absorb the answer which i'm saying because this is the block which you are having uh in your spiritual journey this block in your uh subconscious mind is not allowing you to do your sadhana in a full fledged way because there is always in a fear now if i do sadhana if i get enlightened now i will lose all my attachments uh you know i will not have any desires then what will happen to me what will happen to my family you know this kind of fear even though you may not express it some people express it openly many others don't even know that they have the fear but if you go deep within you do have it so once you understand what they are saying this fear 
is actually, you will, you will understand that this fear is baseless. Because they are saying gain mastery. They are not saying reduce the intensity everywhere. When you are driving the car, an expert will tell you, ensure you have steering control. Actually, he will encourage you to go, um, you know, to increase the speed wherever uh, it's required. See, how do you determine what should be the speed of the car? It depends on the road only. In certain roads, 20 kilometers per hour. In certain roads, 40 kilometers. When you go on the highway, you may even go at 100, 120. So similarly, depending upon the situation, the intensity of thoughts will vary. But what happens is, when you are caught up with your mind, in the sense when you are not a master of your mind, you are a slave to your mind, now you don't consciously decide how many thoughts should I invest in this action. The thoughts run by themselves and invariably your thoughts, your mind keeps on running to useless things, to, to things which are not at all beneficial to you. Actually, it keeps running to things which are harmful to you. That's why you get drained. You, you know, you get drained out whole day more than the physical uh, tiredness. Your tiredness is caused because of your mind only. A person is just sitting in a room, an AC room, he has signed a few papers and he has attended a few phone calls. But after one hour, two hours, he feels very tired. Why? Because the mind has been running everywhere. So, this is something which you need to carefully absorb. That is... Kama is an obstacle, Sangaha, attachment is an obstacle in any activity which you do. Whether that activity is that of sales, whether it's, you know, you're working in office or uh, whether you want to achieve something in life, whether you want to acquire wealth, whether you want to uh, deepen your relationships, whatever be the field. When you have Kamaha, Kamaha definition is uncontrolled desires. Desires which rule you. Then you will really not know what you are doing. That you, your mind will not be calm in order to function. And when you don't have calmness of mind, how can you function efficiently? Your work efficiency will reduce. Let us take this simple example. Now, you are listening to uh, whatever is being told here. You should have an intense desire to listen to these truths, to absorb these truths and to get enlightened. If you don't have an intense desire, you will not be able to continue week after week. But if that intense desire is not under your control, when I say intense desire, I mean Ichha. Consciously, yes, this is what is good for me. So let me um, learn this. But the moment it becomes Kamaha, then it will go out of control. Now you will start becoming anxious. Am I now uh, absorbing this wisdom? Have I... Uh, mastered all the points. My God, when will I get enlightenment? When will I uh, gain self-mastery? So all kinds of modifications, the emotions, the negative emotions will start coming. You will become very, very highly result-oriented and instead of calmly absorbing this wisdom, the very uncontrolled desire will become an obstacle in you receiving this wisdom. So what a master does is that whenever he sees a person who is tamasic, supposing the student is very tamasic, 
lazy. He will tell him, have passion, have a desire. But when he sees a person full of kamaha, uncontrolled desire, he will say, why are you having this desire? Drop the desire. Become calm and focus. So if you stop the master and say, On, you know, that day you told me I should have a desire and now you are telling me I should drop the desire, which one should I do? Both actually mean the same thing. Because a master is trying to get you to the center. When you move to the left, he will pull you towards the right. When you move towards the right extreme, he will pull you towards the left. Is he pulling you towards the left or right? Neither. He is actually asking you to be in the center. There have also been uh, many other uh, questions. Uh, as we go along, you know, I, as I give you more and more points, all those questions um, will get uh, solved. This is not a, a one-day affair. You know, you just uh, just in one session now, completely now you understand your whole mind, and now you sit and master it. It's not like that. It's a lifetime effort. So, we'll have to progress gradually. So what I would uh, request all of you is that having developed that intense desire to perfect yourself, now go week by week and master every step carefully. Don't jump many steps. Don't become result-oriented. When I say don't become result-oriented, again, when I find that people become tamasic, then I will say, inject passion, inject desire. So don't get confused. Understand, whenever a master says something, it is always in that particular context. So when the context changes, he may say something totally opposite. Krishna is talking to Arjuna, who is a warrior. Therefore, he is asking him to fight. Now, same Krishna, when he spoke to the gopis, it's there in the Bhagavatam. He gave them a discourse. What did he talk about? He spoke to them about love, how to convert uh, your selfish love to unconditional love. This is what he spoke to them about. He didn't say, go fight. According to the context, the application will change. A person has also asked this question, how do we develop unconditional love? As we go along, many, many tips will be given. See, these things cannot be uh, developed at one go, but in a relaxed way, as you keep, as you keep gaining the different uh, aspects of this wisdom, and as you do sadhana, your daily sadhana, slowly, slowly, uh, you will find that all these positive qualities, you will be... Uh, you will start developing. This is an automatic process. So we will see some of the questions I will be answering as we go along. Certain questions I will be answering in this verse itself. So it all depends upon the context only. So what did we see last week? When your thoughts run towards an object on their own, then they develop attachment, sangaha. And if uh, the Sangaha level, if you don't, uh, if you don't control the thoughts, if you don't gain mastery, then they will further develop into Kamaha. So, what is the basic difference between Sangaha and Kamaha? This is something which you need to understand. Sangaha is when you miss an object, when you miss a person. Kamaha is more intense where you want to possess and enjoy the object. So when you uh, see a car and you say, oh, this is a lovely car, it may be just a casual thought to start with, but then you start missing that car, that is Sangaha. Kamaha is you positively want to go and at, uh, at any cost you want to go and 
acquired that car and possessed that. That is karma. Up to wanting to possess, there is nothing wrong, as I said last week. But if you are not careful, you will develop a tremendous possessiveness when you are afflicted with karma. So last week, we saw a few modifications. From What he is saying is, from karma is born krodha, anger. So he has given an example of anger that is just one modification. So last week I gave you a few more. So today I will give you many more modifications. We will see um, the whole thing in a more in-depth way. So when he says anger, don't uh, restrict this wisdom to anger. Say a master always uses one word to mean your whole life. Supposing, let us say, um, two partners are there, the husband, wife, and the husband is very calculative, money-minded. He doesn't want to spend for his own wife, and the wife wants something and uh, he's too calculative. I, I'm not talking of uh, unnecessary expense, you know. We're talking of uh, a legitimate thing which she wants. She likes something and she says, I want this. I know some people who are very, very calculative. They always have an Excel sheet and they are calculating. Now, when I say this again, I don't mean to say that you should be a spendthrift. Always the balance is required. So, when a person is very calculative, what do we um, uh, tell that person? Listen, don't be so selfish. Don't constantly think about yourself. You are fulfilling your desire. Similarly, your partner has a desire. Now, why don't you remove your selfishness there? Become more unselfishness to, uh, unselfish towards your partner. Now, when this statement is made when a master tells that person, remove your selfishness with respect to your spouse. What does it mean? The deeper principle is, remove selfishness in all aspects of your life. So what he does is, he takes it literally. He removes his selfishness with respect to his wife. But then with respect to his children, he is highly selfish then he has not understood the principle. So when a master says one thing, he may, that is applicable for the entire life. So here he is saying, from kamaha is born anger, krodaha, that is just one modification. Now using that as a clue, now you, if you, you know, through this yogic approach, when you penetrate into the uh, into your own mind, you will find that what he mean, uh, uh, you know, what he means is, kamaha can develop various modifications. Krodha, anger is one modification. So there are many, many modifications. So last week I told you there are three possibilities. Whenever you have a desire, they can get fulfilled, or they may not be fulfilled or they may be obstructed. Three possibilities. In Sanskrit, the terminologies are Purthi. Purthi means fulfillment of a desire. So when you have a desire, the first possibility is fulfillment, Purthi. The Second possibility is apurtihi. Apurtihi means non-fulfillment is a possibility. And the third possibility is vignaha. Vignaha means obstacle, obstruction, impediment. Somebody can come and obstruct. So these are the three possibilities which our yogis had discovered. Now, 
Last week, you know, whenever the desire is fulfilled, what happens? Whenever the desire is uh, unfulfilled, what happens? We saw a few modifications. So I'll give you more. I will cover that also. Uh, I'll give you more dimensions to what I gave last week, and also cover more so that your uh, penetration or the the penetration of uh, your own mind becomes more deep. So we'll take up. this possibility of the desire getting fulfilled the purti so whenever your desire is fulfilled what happens you get what is called as sukham sukham means happiness whenever your desire is in a state of apurti un non fulfillment then you experience what is called as dukham sorrow so when your desire is purti it is sukham happiness when your desire is in a state of apurti non fulfillment you experience dukham sorrow and whenever your desire uh is obstructed there is a vigna obstacle then what happens is you develop what is called as pida pida means pain uh, a kind of uh, uh annoyance what we call as irritation you know annoyance pain a lot of pain is there so these three things first you need to understand whenever you have kama and when it is fulfilled it is sukham happiness this is only a te- we are talking of temporary happiness now we are not referring to that uh, permanent infinite happiness of the supreme actually if you want that permanent happiness that word is called ananda ananda means parama sukham the highest happiness is ananda that bliss of the infinite which is there within you here we are talking of temporary happiness now this is the first experience when you have a desire the most interesting thing is see the desire can either be in a purti state or a purti state or vignaha state one of these three only now till it gets fulfilled it is in an apurti state non fulfilled state therefore the moment you have kamaha you will already be agitated there will be that anxiety will this desire get fulfilled or not only when it gets fulfilled you will get that sukha that happiness but till it gets fulfilled it is in a state of apurti so that anxiety will be there and if you know that now this desire will never get fulfilled that anxiety will turn into dukham sorrow this is why buddha said you know the moment you have attachment desires you will uh you know you will be miserable desire is the cause for misery he said what he meant was uncontrolled desire all the masters say the same thing only in different ways so in this yogic approach um you are being given the total wisdom so that there are no chances of misunderstanding the only uh, thing which you need to do is remove your preconceived notions and try to fully absorb what is being said so the moment you have kama it is in a state of apurti non fulfilled state that is why you become restless i want this immediately the restlessness starts when if you get it you will experience sukham till you get it the restlessness will be there and supposing you you never get it then the restlessness will become 
dukkham sorrow if there is an obstruction then that will become pida pain or annoyance that irritation so these are the first three modification see this is like a tree you have a branch root branches there then three branches come out three sub branches and in each of those branch there can be more sub branches so i will be giving you a few sub branches i'm not covering the entire thing but the inputs which are being given to you that those inputs are more than enough for you to do your sadhana this itself will take a long time to really really absorb for you to absorb this you know so whenever you experience happiness sukham now what is the psychology of the mind will it stop with that no when you find something very pleasurable immediately the mind will start wanting it more why is it that you are uh going to an experience again and again because that experience gives you pleasure that happiness temporary happiness therefore you want to go back to that experience that state of wanting more and more and more is called lobha greed very very interesting so last week i mentioned about greed now i am giving you the same i am explaining the same thing with more depth what is the source of greed why is it that people become very greedy when you think that this object can give you happiness and when you uh, start acquiring that object you get a certain amount of temporary happiness now the mind will want it more and more and more if something does not give you happiness now you will not develop greed over that that is a further some other modifications that we will be seeing so when you see a person who is very very greedy about something there is no point in telling that person don't be greedy his mind will be greedy about that object as long as he gets that experience of happiness from that as long as he thinks that happiness is in that object he will be greedy the, when i'm saying he the mind so some people are greedy about wealth because they think wealth will give them happiness some people are greedy about power because they think power gives them happiness and when they get power or when they get uh, wealth no doubt it gives them a temporary happiness what in tamil we call as sitrinbum there are two beautiful words given by the great siddhas uh, in tamil language you know sitrinbum perinbum perinbum is what uh, the uh, in sanskrit is called as parama sukham that is the ultimate infinite experience but the other objects of the world give you temporary enjoyment as long as you experience that you will be greedy some people are greedy about food some people are you know i i know um a person who is very extremely greedy about uh, clothes you know a particular that to a particular color um uh, uh, t-shirts you know so greedy some people are greedy about slippers also <laughs> you, you may laugh but it's all the mind only what you are giving value for you know we cannot fix a standard and say this will give happiness this object will give happiness to everyone it it's all personal so when your mind wants more and more and more and more of that object that is the modification called lobha 
So whenever you have Kamaha and the state of Purtihi fulfillment, it gives you a certain amount of happiness. But then it does not stop with that. It wants more and more. When you are in a state of Lobaha, now you will be highly stressed. The restlessness will be maximum. Look at a person who is greedy. Supposing a person is very greedy about food. Just look at that person eating food. He will not enjoy the food. The anxiety about you know, the, the food will prevent him from enjoying the food. A person who is sitting there calmly, he will be chewing and registering the experience and enjoying. But a greedy person, his focus will be on consuming more quantity, not on enjoying what he is consuming. When you are taking your first cup of ice cream, why can't you enjoy it in a relaxed way? No. Your mind, you, you, why do you eat so fast? Because your mind wants to finish this and get more. Now, what is the very goal of eating the ice cream? It is only enjoyment. Now, instead of enjoying it, now your focus has shifted to increasing the quantity. After enjoying this, once you finish it, if you feel like having more, again in a calm way, if you take more and have, then that is not greed. So, Lobaha is a very, very powerful modification. Wherever you have Lobaha, you will be highly restless. You will not be able to experience life, that aspect of life in a calm way. From this uh, state of uh, Sukham, that is the first modification, Kamaha, you will experience Sukham happiness. From this state of Sukham, what are all the different modifications you, 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 know, you can get into is what we are seeing. So one is Lobaha. The other thing which happens, whenever you experience something and that gives you pleasure, the next thing that will come to your mind is fear. Fear of losing whatever you have acquired. A person who, who is very possessive, I said no, Kamaha will lead to possessiveness. So, whenever you are very possessive about an object, you will have an intense fear about losing that. So, if you are attached, if you are very possessive about your children, you will have fear about losing your children. Losing doesn't necessarily mean uh, something, you know, a fear that something will happen to the children. That is also there. I know many parents who are constantly afraid. I hope my nothing happens to my child, they say. Or they, they constantly have a fear that the child may move away from them. That is why they don't uh, want to give the children that required independence. Very interesting. So that is called Bayaha. Bayaha means fear. That is another powerful modification. Wherever you have fear, now trace back. Some desire has got fulfilled and now that is causing the fear. You may say, sir, why do we fear death? Because of the desire for life. Does it mean you should drop the desire for life? Again, I, we are only saying drop the kamaha. Ichcha should be there. When it is Ichcha, we can control it. It, it will not develop into these modifications. But if it is kamaha, then the Bayaha will come. Why is it that people are afraid of coronavirus? Because of the fear of death only. Now my point is any way we have to die one day. Are we, by, are we going to now become deathless physically? No. So the moment you absorb that aspect of this wisdom, then all this fear about corona, this that all that will go away. Whatever you need to do, that you do. 
caution. Uh, you know, be cautious. That's all. But what is there to fear? But the mind gets into an intense state of fear. You know, uh, this happened to one of our known people. This person, this uh, man's mother, she has been suffering from chronic cough, dry cough syndrome for almost 20-25 years. And that dry cough has been induced. It is a side effect of some other tablets which she is, she is taking for some other disease. So, uh, last 25 years, uh, you know, in the night and all she used to cough. Especially while uh, sleeping in the night, she, she gets a lot of dry cough. Last 25 years it's been going. Now, when the, the COVID-19 situation came up, uh, you know, for the first week, so much of news was only about COVID. This man was listening. And when he heard all that, that night his mother coughed. He immediately, uh, next day, he said, you were coughing yesterday night. Uh, we'll go to the doctor and check up for COVID. Now the mother said, for the last 25 years I've been coughing. You know it is a side effect of this tablet which I'm having. He said, no, 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 no. They are saying if you have cough, if you have cold, it can be corona. So let us go and check it. So they went to the doctor. Now the doctor was very well known to them. He was the one who was treating uh, his mother. So the doctor told him, why have you suddenly brought her for coughing? Last so many years, the, the, we, I clearly explained to you. He insisted. He said, no, doctor, it's better. The doctor said, it's not required. This is not a symptom of COVID-19. But the uh, son didn't leave. He took her to a uh, center where they were uh, testing and he got her tested. Of course, the test came negative. But the amount of stress which his mother went through because of this fear which he had. So this is something which is not a desirable state at all. So why is this fear coming? Because it is a fear of losing. It is a fear of losing your health. It is a fear of losing your life. Fear is always related to losing something. So that is Baya. And then when you are in a state of Sukham, the other modification which can happen is you may develop pride. See, whenever your desire is fulfilled, that can give you a lot of pride. That is called Mada in Sanskrit. Mada means a pride, a sense of, um, not a pride in the positive sense, but in a negative way, in an egoistic way you start feeling superior. Because when you have mother, now that develops into superiority complex. You start looking down upon people who don't have that object which you have. A typical example is, a person acquires a lot of wealth. Before he got wealth, he was normal. But the moment he gets a lot of wealth, now he becomes very proud. He starts looking down upon people who don't have wealth. That state is called mother. In uh, Tamil also, the word madam. Madam means, you know, we say, madam uh, which means the elephant, you know, uh, when uh, something goes wrong with the elephant, we say, it has been afflicted with mother. It's a common terminology we use. So when you are afflicted with pride, you have lost control completely. You are, you are feeling superior. How can you feel superior to anybody else? You may have wealth, another person does not have that wealth. Does it make that person inferior? You may have power, another person may not have power. So the moment you have mother, pride, the mo the Further development of that is what is very dangerous. 
you will start misusing that object whether whatever you got whether it is wealth or power or name or fame whatever it is that you have acquired you will start misusing it which is what is very dangerous to yourself and to the society there is nothing wrong in acquiring wealth but the more wealth the more power the more name you get the more humble you should become if you have ichha shakti you will never get into madha the pride you know if you read our scriptures if you read our history many many great kings were there who were all very spiritual extremely humble so that is a modification mother the other modification when we talk of mother there is one more thing called matsarya matsarya is jealousy matsarya means jealousy or envy when you when you get an object now you look down upon people who are lower than you but then you start becoming jealous about people who are having more than you because you have low bha there is no end to this if you have now 10 uh, 10 rupees you want 100 if you want 100 you you now uh, there is some more than 100 is 1000 more than 1000 is 2000 more than 1 million is 10 million more than 10 million is 1 billion like this you can keep on going so at any point of life you will neither be at zero nor will you be at 100 you will be somewhere in between and wherever you are you will develop a superiority complex uh, with respect to those people who are below you and you will develop an inferiority complex with those people who are above you you will start feeling jealous a classic example is supposing let us say a rich person conducts a wedding and he spends lavishly now that is his uh, money he has earned that money so he is using it and it is his wish to spend it in any way he wants the moment you read that news what is your reaction are you boiling within yourself the moment you are boiling and you start criticizing it means you are into matsarya jealousy if you are not suffering from that modification you will say oh i am so happy that uh, somebody has got married i really wish that uh, couple that they lead a very happy life what is there to criticize there if at all factually you may say probably you know they could have cut down on some expenses that is different but the uh, the kind of uh, anger which it generates within you you will have to observe so whenever you criticize others for having something it means you have an intense desire for that object and that is not getting fulfilled therefore you start criticizing if you say uh, a person or you know a person is wealthy you start criticizing him for that it means you have desires for wealth a person is enjoying and you say He is, uh, these people are highly materialistic you know many people who call themselves spiritual they keep on criticizing others they say you are all running after wealth all the time after enjoyment highly materialistic people the people who say this they are the people who are highly materialistic their desires are not fulfilled therefore they are cursing they are feeling so jealous a true spiritual person a true yogi when he finds a person having a lot of wealth when he finds a person enjoying he will say i am so happy for that person i bless that person and i also pray to god that he seeks more and more higher things in life that is different so these are some of the modifications i am giving you many more are there 
but this should be more than enough so whenever the kama ha purti stage is there sukham happiness comes but then that can develop into lobha which is uh, greed bhaya ha which is fear it can develop into mada which is pride superiority complex it can develop into matsarya which is jealousy and inferiority complex now when it is in a state of apurti that is when the desire is not fulfilled as it you will feel restless but when you know that desire is not going to be fulfilled now you will experience what is called as dukham sorrow now this is the first modification but if you don't deal with that sorrow quickly that dukham can become what is called as vishadah vishadah means depression deep deep sorrow the areas which where you know your desires are not fulfilled you will either be in a state of dukham or vishadah you have to be very careful when it is at the sukham dukham and pida level it is easier to control but when it goes into further modification then it becomes more difficult but it's possible uh, the, uh, why are we studying all this not to just merely say that these are the modifications now and then to go away for everything you know the solutions are there you have the power to control you have the power to overcome all these forces within you so now we'll come to the obstruction but before that i will answer one more question which has been asked a person has asked sir when we have a desire you're saying if we fulfill it also some modifications will come when you when it is not fulfilled also modifications will come so what should i do with the desire please understand this it is not the fulfillment or non fulfillment of the desire which is causing these modifications it is fulfillment or non fulfillment of uncontrolled desires which cause these modifications so how do you get rid of these modifications by gaining mastery over your desires by converting your kama into ichha through sadhana of course another person has asked so through sadhana the long term we i know we will benefit but can you also give us tips by which we can handle these modifications that also i will definitely cover as we go along but what you need to understand is it is not a question about fulfilling or not fulfilling first criteria is is the desire itself under your control or not when it is not under your control and it gets fulfilled on its own or it does not get fulfilled on its own that is when these modifications happen to you when it is ichha shakti you fulfill the ichha shakti you will experience sukham you can arrest your mind there whenever your desire is not fulfilled before it becomes dukham sorrow you can withdraw your thoughts and say oh this is not possible so okay i will remove my thoughts i will remove this desire that capacity you will have which is with ichha shakti whereas when it is kama you will not have that so in the state of apurtihi that causes dukham sorrow and then that if you are not careful you will get into a state of vishadah depression and when you get into a state of depression you will become lifeless there will be no vitality 
the spark in your life will be missing. You know, sometimes when I see uh, very, very successful people, that is those who are, see when we say successful person, that person has achieved something in one area of life. But when I look into that person and see their entire life, all the other areas, their entire mind, I feel very sad for them because there is a lot of depression also they have. On one side, they are highly successful in one field. But on the other hand, they also suffer from a lot of depression. They suffer from tremendous modifications. Now, they are so afraid of losing whatever they have acquired. They suffer from pride, inferiority complex, everything, you know. See, when you don't understand all this, then it's, uh, uh, you know, you, you will not be uh, agitated. But that agitation actually is not a positive state. It is, it is like you're having a lot of dirt and you don't know that dirt is there in the room, you know, that kind of thing. But as you begin to understand this, the first thing that will happen is it will uh, shake you. Till now you are not aware of all this. Suddenly when this is told to you, that will shake you. But don't immediately uh, lose your spirit. That is why again and again I am getting to that word Pumsa. As a human being, you have the capacity to gain complete mastery. And then when Vignaha is there, that is it's in a state of Vigna obstruction. Whenever a desire is obstructed, it will give rise to Pida. That is pain or annoyance, irritation. And that pida can further develop into two modifications. What are they? Number one is called anutapaha. Anutapaha means guilt, remorse. When you have a desire, when you want uh, an object, I want this. Now, when somebody comes and obstructs it, now that deflected uh, thought current towards that person becomes anger, krodaha, that is the other modification, krodaha, anger. But supposing you yourself are the obstruction, let us say you have been unable to fulfill the desire because of lack of capacity, then that whole pida or pain turns towards yourself. You become the object on whom you are directing your pain, your irritation to and anger. Then you develop what is called as anutapaha, means remorse, guilt. Guilt is a, a deadly thing. In spirituality, we always say the guilt of a sin is a greater sin than the sin itself. If you commit a mistake, yes, I have committed it. See that, now correct yourself, move on. That is the spiritual approach. Now don't get stuck there and eternally you are cursing yourself because you have committed a mistake. That state is called guilt. Why uh, these great yogis say that advanced sadhanas you know, should be done at, uh, you know, should be done very carefully under the guidance of a master only. Why do they say that? They don't reveal everything at one go. Here, the I am revealing actually quite a bit because I am finding you all very, very receptive. But when we come to the advanced sadhana, I prepare you a lot and then reveal. Because suddenly when the energy is given, all these modifications which are stored inside you, if they all start bursting out, you will not be able to handle the situation. That is why we need to go, go gradually. A lot of guilt will start coming. So when you do your Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana every day, these modifications will come at a very small pace which you can handle 
small small quantities which you can easily handle you go on doing the sadhana over a period of time you will get purified and whenever we have these advanced courses that is like an operation so you come and do the sadhana under the guidance of a master he will make you go deep within and he will infuse the healing energy so that all these modifications start getting healed so every year when you are getting the empowerment sessions a lot of these uh, modifications are getting healed from their source not merely at the superficial level so anutapah means remorse or guilt or the peda can be directed towards another person that is called krodha anger so as i uh, told you last week you want something another person gets it now immediately the desire will turn toward that person that pain you know you will project it on the other person then it becomes anger there can be no anger without pain there can be no pain without an obstruction and there can be no obstruction if there is no desire simple so i have given you several modifications here krishna is just simply giving one modification from desire is born anger so instead of anger you should use the word vikar modification then that will help you to penetrate more and more so last week i had given you this homework of trying to uh, find out Uh, you know the root cause of the various emotions which you may go through in life now this week i have given you more wisdom so with this what i would suggest is make an objective analysis see the first step in overcoming all these modifications is first recognizing them and then trying to trace out the source so with last week's wisdom those of you who did the homework i sincerely wish all of you did it because if you have done it the energy which i am going to give today in today's meditation you will be able to receive it fully now with today's energy whatever i'll be infusing within you in the meditation now do that process deepen that process find out what modification you are suffering from be frank if you have fear accept it no what is wrong most people who have maximum fear they say i don't have fear it is very amusing if you have greed yes i have greed if you have pride i have pride then go back to the source if you have depression yes i am depressed in this area now let me go back so locate the source as you are doing that sadhana of locating the source i am uh, in- increasing the awareness every sun- uh, every meditation which we which we are doing and as the awareness increases uh, what will happen with your personal sadhana of yoga sankirtan the energy the healing energy will start flowing in that area and you will find that that will get very um, quickly healed and whenever we are having these advanced courses empowerment courses the lord of healing shakti is being invoked and it will be sent when you receive that with this sadhana you will know exactly you will start directing that energy automatically to those areas which require healing see today you don't even know uh, what you are asking when when a person says please give me healing they don't know what they are asking because they don't know what they have to be healed from it is just a superficial uh, query you know so the more you penetrate you say this is the area where the dirt is there see like you call a person to clean your house you don't even know where the dirt is no is it that portion there a dead rat is there so i want you to clean it you're very very specific isn't it when you use your stain removers for your clothes you find out where the stains are and specifically you apply the stain remover there and then when you wash it the stains will go away similarly when you start uh, tracing 
the source of the modifications. When you sit for sadhana, automatically, the, when you do the yoga sankirtan sadhana, automatically the energy will start flowing into those areas. So, deepen uh, whatever homework I had given last week, because I have given you more wisdom this week. Uh, we will go into more and more depth in the coming weeks. Next week, uh, I will give a brief summary of whatever we did today and last week about this modification because it's a very deep subject, you know. Uh, one session or two sessions are not really enough. And then we will go to the next verses, the next verse and then the coming verses. Uh, because if, I, if, if you just ask me one, that's Kamaha and the modifications, for uh, six months we can keep going into the depth. But uh, we, we should also cover more verses whenever it's required because the same thing will be given from a different angle as we go to other verses. So your mind will also get a little bit of variety and uh, other angles will help you to penetrate uh, better. Okay, so now we will have meditation. Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. Consciousness and going within. I am not this body. mind with the various thoughts and emotions. I am the observer of my own mind. The various thoughts and emotions are outside me. I am the consciousness.
I look at my own mind as if I'm looking at an object in different stages of thought flow the mind has developed casual thoughts attachments uncontrolled desires various modifications I look at all these which are present in my mind objectively I look at them without identifying with them I have the power to create my life as a human being I have the power to choose my thoughts If I have the capacity to create all these thoughts attachments desires and the various modifications i have the power to reverse the whole process as long as i identify with my mind the mind controls me but the moment i withdraw my consciousness and i start observing my own mind the mind loses its power in some areas the mind has casual thoughts in some areas the mind has very serious thoughts in some areas the mind has sangaha attachment in some areas the mind has kamaha uncontrolled desires some areas it has developed various modifications as a human being I choose to awaken my inner powers by doing my daily sadhana so that I gain this capacity to reverse this whole process Mm. 
my goal is to gain complete self mastery and become a sthita prajna the senses are very powerful but the mind is more powerful than the senses the mind is very powerful but i am more powerful than the mind the source of my power is derived from the infinite consciousness offer your gratitude to god supreme offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters slowly come back regular fingers your toes rub your palms together to create a warmth cup your eyes with your palms rub your eyes cheeks forehead top of the head back of the head slowly open your eyes Welcome back. So we had a very deep session today. I am taking it very gradually because at one go if all these secrets are opened up especially in this yogic approach you know even though i'm talking about the modifications of the mind since the energy is also being invoked you all are experiencing these things directly they are hitting you directly so that is why i'm being very very careful because see we are only in verse number 62 This is only 50% of the ladder of fall. 
then the remaining will be given in the next verse. So, as the you go deeper and deeper, that sense of fear, that sense of, uh, uh, you know, in what in Tamil we call as Malaipa. Malaipa means, oh my God, so much is there within me. So much of dirt is there within me. What am I to do with that? You should never get into that feeling. That is why I am constantly stressing on Pumsaha. You are a human being. You have infinite powers within you. And you come to a Guru for solutions. Remember one thing. Don't give more weightage to your problems. Once you have come to a Guru, who is connected with the infinite, give more weightage to the power of the infinite. So today in the meditation I have, I just took you very fast, you know, took you very deep and then increased the awareness further. And also, you know, this is very important to understand that the mind is powerful. See, we are seeing the power of the mind here. But then you have more power than the mind because you are beyond the mind. That is what we are awakening side by side. So this is extremely important. So do that homework which I have given you. Go through those modifications and see what modifications you have in which area of life and then try to go to the source of the modifications according to the guidelines which have been given in today's session. We will see in more depth next week. Um, so do those preparatory meditations which have been given to the you know, for the 22 day program morning and evening. Do them daily and also those instructions which I had specially written and given to you. So read them early in the morning as soon as you wake up and then just before going to sleep. So they will start going into your deeper mind. So that preparation is required because see if this itself is deep the 22 day program, it's a very intense sadhana program. So it will, the energy awakened will be, I mean we can't actually quantify and it's very difficult for me to tell you how it is. So that is why I am preparing you all from now itself. So by the time we come there, you will be fully ready for it, you know. Okay, so we'll continue next week. Thank you.